King Charles III wraps up his store of Australia. Camilla introduces new walkabout styling. It's all the rage. Australian Senator spoke her mind. Jeremy Vine Show. Ignorance. Is my gender having an identity crisis? That and lots more in today's Majesty Sussex Report in the news. I'm Antonio. Thank you for being here. Well, hello everyone. Good day. It's great to have you join us. Thank you so very much for spending some of your valuable time here with us. Um, I am feeling much better. I still have a little bit of a fever. I apologize. I wasn't able to um, upload much. I did um, some shorts. Um, so every time around, I think, in October, right around my birthday, <laughs> um, I usually will get either a cold or something for a few days, and then I'm usually okay. And I think it has to do with the change of temperature, the change of weather. I usually will get a, a mild cold or something um, every change of season. And sometimes I don't, which is great, uh, but this time around, it, it certainly did hit me and I started to feel not so great on Sunday, uh, this past Sunday. And um, I tend to, one of the ones I feel that way, uh, I start to give my poor body as much medication. It's like, okay, I'm going to take everything, which is not a good thing either. But um, so I have a mild fever presently, but it's, it's, it's on its way out. So I was kind of um, really in angst to get this video um, uploaded and get it done uh, because there's so much to kind of talk about and so much I wanted to talk about. And I didn't think it was fair for me to come on here and um, not be completely lucid, number one. And number two, to do, you know, or bring to you some something that is that, that would just be not the greatest. Um, so since I feel better today, <laughs> I thought, okay, let me get all my thoughts together and um, put this into the video to um, stream. And um, yes, you did hear me say birthday. And I find it really funny that I, I kind of, I was going to do a segment called Rise of the Scorpions, but then I decided not to do it. Uh, because if I'm not mistaken, um, Baron's birthday from Royal Sussex is on November third or something like that. I think it's no I think it's November third. Hopefully I'm not wrong. And I think Anne's birthday and Anna's um uh uh Duchess of Success, hers is next week. I don't remember what date. And my birthday is tomorrow, <laughs> October twenty-fourth. So I'm I'm right at the beginning of Scorpio. For anyone who believes in horoscopes and that kind of stuff. Anyways, I'm right at the beginning of Scorpio, end of Libra um, on the 24th of October. So tomorrow's my birthday. <laughs> I am always super excited about birthdays. I know people, some people are not because they're like, oh, I'm getting older. I love it. I love it because what's the opposite of having a birthday is not having one, right? And um, every second, every day, um, I was going to say every second, every minute, every hour. <laughs> and I just jumped to every second, every day. <laughs> um, I am in praise and joy of knowing that the good Lord has allowed me to live another year and acquire experiences and knowledge that before I didn't have. And with each day that passes by, no matter whether it's a day where 
I can I, I, I can see the brightness of the sun and, and be happy and, and everything seems to be going so well uh, and, 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 and say thank you. Uh, but also in those days where everything just seems so useless, where I'm pessimistic, where I see humanity and I don't have much hope for us, where I see people believe in these false prophets and, and being guided onto um, the precipice of madness. And they believe, and in their belief, they hold up scriptures. And it could be scriptures of any given religion that, that, that we have here on earth. Because in the fundamentalness of religion, it all teaches the same thing. The basics of religion teaches us the same things. But us, human beings, people, we have corrupted it because within our humanity, there is ego. Within our humanity, there's ambition. Within our humanity, there is this need, right, to dominate and to, and, and, and to exercise power over others. And in that, religion is also part of that because religion is created by man. Religion is not divine, it's not God, it's created by man. And that is why I say many times, I am a person of fate. I believe in fate. I believe in the divinity of something greater than me. I pray unto a God I do not see, but I know exists. I pray for salvation. I pray for knowledge. I pray for understanding. I pray for kindness. I pray for love. Because I know that in prayer, there is strength. In prayer, we put something out in the universe that we cannot see. But we know that first, that force will join the other people who are praying for that thing. That thing of hope, of love, of understanding. And it will join together. And in that force, in that force, change happens. Destinies are changed. Futures are carved out. And that is fate. Is believing in that which I cannot see. Believing that it exists. I take no man for his, or for his word. I do not. Because man is corrupt. And we have evidence of it over and over. Those who stand in front of a pulpit and they teach us and preach to us dependent on their journey, their ideology. People have held the Bible and then held a whip in the other hand. People have held the Bible, chains of subjugation in the other hand. Man is corrupt. Therefore, my fate is strong because I believe in that which I cannot see. And I know he exists because I am a witness of his glory. I'm a witness because today I'm alive. And today I rejoice. And before I start crying, I'm going to say thank you. So yes, tomorrow <laughs> I get to celebrate a day older on this little blue planet um, in the universe and to live a life that every turnaround sometimes surprises me. I'm at a place where I didn't think I would be, to be quite honest, and in certain parts of my life. But at the same time, I know that there is a plan. And without me knowing, sometimes I may resist that plan and I, or I may make other choices that are not on that plan. And sometimes I take a longer, <laughs> a longer route to the plan that God has got prepared for me. And with all that said, I want to say thank you. Thank you, each and every one of you, for being here. Thank you for those who are listening to this on the, um, on, on the, on the stream. Thank you all who are in the chat, chatting it up, 
um, thank you um, for each and every one of you who show up and listen silently, um, but make sure you click on the like <laughs> or subscribe if you haven't. Um, thank you so very much because you show up, you listen, sometimes you listen for the entire thing and sometimes you listen for five minutes and you're like, okay, Antonio is just boring again today, next. <laughs> Or you basically, you're like, I've heard this before, so I'm going to, but thank you. I, I thank you from the very bottom of my heart. I never, ever, ever, ever thought that I would have the courage to do what I'm doing right now, um, to, to, to be part of this, to, to lend my voice to this sort of injustice and, and unfairness that we see in the world and we call out in, for those in power. And I am so appreciative for every single opportunity, every single thought, every single voice that joins in all of this. I am in admiration of every other content creator on this platform and on others that take the time every day to create something positive, to put out in the world, to put out on this internet <laughs> and defend what needs to be defended, call out what needs to be called out, make fun of what needs to be made, made fun of, criticize what needs to be criticized. I admire each and every one of them because I know it's not easy work. I know sometimes it's, it's, difficult to, to get certain things and um, to come up with, with, with a script, to be thoughtful of what you're going to say, you know, for those who take the responsibility to make sure that um, what we say to each and every one of you, what we put out are not salacious things, right? Not to say we can be entertaining and put out salacious stuff for fun, but we put it out with the knowledge that you know what it is. And I am grateful for each and every one of them, for the ones that I follow, are the ones that I continue to follow, I listen to either live or not, um, but I'm every single day inspired by them. And I, I, I thank them for um, being an, 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 an example for me that each day, each time, I learn something new um, in their creativity. All right, I've spoken for more than 10 minutes. I think that should be enough. Let's get into La Noticia. <laughs> King Charles III's recent visit to Australia, though brief, was marked by a mix of ceremonial fanfare, political tension, and environmental advocacy. The king and his wife arrived on October 18th on a rainy Sydney day. The couple was greeted by the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and Premier of New South Wales. The couple did the usual royal tour staples. They visited school, went to a church, visited a company demonstrating Australia's advances and ingenuity, and so on and so on and so on. In a six-hour stop in Canberra, the King praised Australia's leadership on climate change, emphasizing the nation's vulnerability to cat catastrophic weather events and urged a continued focus on sustainability. He commended um, Australia's na uh, natural resources, such as wind and solar energy, as key ingredients for creating a more sustainable um, future. Sorry. <laughs> um, however, the highlight was a protest led by Indigenous leader Lydia Thorpe, who turned her back on the king during his speech and publicly denounced the um, monarchy's involvement in the theft of Aboriginal land. Earlier, she led a protest at the Aus Australian War Memorial, where demonstrators carried Aboriginal and Palestinian flags, calling attention to the ongoing injustices faced by Indigenous Australians. Thank you. 
the king is not our sovereign. We are the real sovereigns in this country. The king is not our sovereign. The king lives in your country. He's from your country. He can't be our king. have their children removed, uh, when their their families are incarcerated, when you have your land taken from you, that you will understand what I'm talking about. But I understand that, you know, it's all about um, uh, portraying me as an angry black woman. Well, yeah, I'm angry. I'm angry because I see too many of our people dying, too many people incarcerated. We don't have any land. Your king and his... Uh, previous uh, kings and queens stole that from us and we want it back. Give us our land back. Give us what you stole from us. Our bones, our skulls, our babies, our people. You destroyed our land. Give us a treaty. We want a treaty in this country. You are a I admire that woman so much the courage and bravery that it has, that it takes to, to be confident in oneself and in the history of one's people, to stand in front of the colonizer, to stand, because that is what he represents. Him and the monarchy, they represent that. To stand in front of that and be in your power because I know we saw her alone there. We saw her alone in those that chamber of parliament. But let me tell you, she was not alone. Every ancestor was in that room with her, was in that room with her. And whether the leaders today of other indigenous groups or 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 the indigenous groups that 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 that, that um, she represents or is part of come out and say what she did was wrong. We don't agree. This is not the time. We don't approve. That's okay. That's okay. Because it's never. It's never the right time. When kids are slaughtered in their in 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 their schools, it's never the right time to talk about gun control. And it just keeps happening over and over and over and over. But it's never the right time. No, now it's time for thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. They're here. They're there. Thoughts and prayers. So when is the time? In Quebec, the Pope um, came to visit, I, I don't remember when, uh, a, a few years ago. And there, were, there was such, there was a movement to, to be able to, to speak to him about the atrocities that, that were done to indigenous people, to, to the children. So many children went missing. And it's not until recently, a few years ago, they started to find mass graves behind schools. These little bodies that were just, couldn't take the, the, the punishment and the suffering that these people that claim to be religious. Let me, let me stop there. Because I'm getting, getting angry. Um, it's amazing the things that are done in the name of Christ and in the name of God and it's done by such ungodly people.
And for that and many other reasons, I stand, I stand with her. Um, it's just absolutely incredible. I mean, we have seen the pushback already, people criticizing her, even people who are indigenous, indigenous leaders criticizing her. That's not the place, it's not the time. Listen, I stand with her a hundred percent, a hundred percent. What bravery and what courage. Another thing I wanted to sort of just, just, just mention that I found really interesting is I've been watching how the different networks in Australia have been covering the um, visit. So ABC Australia, Channel 7, Channel 9, and so on. And it's, it's interesting. It's nothing that I don't expect. It's, it's done in a very sort of royal way and civilized, and, and they only show you sort of the, 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 the good parts and barely mention some of the other things that are happening around the visit. Now, a, 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 a curious thing happened. So in one of the newscasts um, during the day, so you have the anchor in the studio and you have the reporter out on, on, on the field. And so the newscaster um, in, in the studio, so she said, okay, we're gonna throw it to Deborah and Deborah's gonna give us an update on you know, what the Royals are actually doing. So she gives her update and it was at, in front of the church. So she gives her update, blah, 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 blah. And then the news anchor said, um, tell us a little bit about you know, any kind of protest, how many people are there, what are the protests in the games? Goes back to the reporter. The reporter completely ignores the question and continues to talk about, and there's so many people who showed up really early. There's, 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 there's a massive lineup. Uh, so many people enthusiastic to meet the king and the queen. And she throws it back to studio. And the anchor kind of looks a, a little bit perplexed. And then she goes, oh, that is fantastic. Um, so we heard that there's, there's, there's a few protesters over there. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it? Goes back to the field reporter. The field reporter ignores it completely and continues to talk about how great they're being received. And finally, the anchor goes, um, De Deborah, I'm interested in your the, your thoughts because you are there on the field. We've heard that there's a few protests happening. Right now, 18 degrees. We would like to know what the protest is all about. And then finally she said, she goes, well, there, there's a few protesters that are here. They're just, you know, doing their thing. And... Um, you know, you can hardly see them or hear them or anything. And the minute she starts to say that, you can hardly see them or hear them. Like, it's not a big deal. Um, I don't know if someone opened her mic so you can hear. Because I think they can isolate so you can only hear the voice, right? And cut off, like, the surroundings. So I don't know if the sound engineer just went, you know what, woman? Screw you. Turned on the 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 mic so it can pick up what's the noise around and you can hear so clearly protesters you can hear them shouting so so clearly and the fascinating thing is when the anchor says oh yeah we can hear them we can hear them now so they they sound a little bit loud and i, I she's like uh oh yeah yeah i guess i guess i guess um they're 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 shouting louder now okay yeah, but it's just, it's just a few of them, not, nothing, nothing. I found that fascinating. Fascinating. King, because he neglected the Commonwealth. He liked going to the white Commonwealth countries. He liked going a lot to India, but he avoided Africa if he could. But he, Why? The, well, he just didn't find it culturally very interesting, whereas he was very interested in the culture of India. And the real truth is he doesn't, uh, Camilla doesn't like traveling long distances. I think he does find it very difficult now. He doesn't look as if he's enjoying the job, having waited so long for it. Mm. But, but in the end, you see, the Commonwealth will fall apart unless he works hard at it. I don't even know what to say with, with this, this picture anyway. <laughs> it's, like, it's just kind of funny.
<laughs> number one, I look at look at Camilla. She she is so done with all of this. <laughs> so done. Oh well, as 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 we all know, like she could care two pineapples about anything. She just wanted to get that crown on her head. That's what that woman wanted. And to set her family up, however she's setting them up, she's doing her thing. But um, on this tour, Camilla introduced a new way to do the walkabout. Okay? It's called... I'm calling it. I'm calling it the Camilla. So... It's it's just a rage right now. <laughs> let's, let's check it out. So this is when you know that Princess Diana, the late Princess Diana has a sense of humor because I am attributing some of this stuff to her wicked sense of humor. I mean, they arrive, it's raining, <laughs> right? So this one here though, are you guys ready? Are you folks ready for this? So Charles, and Camilla, they go to sign this this book, and the book is opened. And Charles looks at it, and he's like, "Camilla, I I, I can't do an impression of people, so I'm just gonna do my own thing, right?" So he says, um, "Camilla, I've signed this already. Look, my name is here already." <laughs> and she scans it, and she's like, "Yes, it's there with Diana's." <laughs> The book was signed the first time him and Diana went to Australia. So they brought back the same book and made him sign it again. Opened it at the page that has Princess Diana's signature on it. Oh boy. I laugh so hard. <laughs> and it's still so funny to me. Oh God. Oh God works in mysterious ways. And Princess Diana, I'm sure. She's having a good laugh on all of this because, man, that was funny. So awkward. And now this, I, <laughs> oh, the ancestors work in, in mysterious ways. You know, they do what they need to do at the time they need to do it. But may there be no doubts that they're working their way and everything happens at a time that it's supposed to happen. I do not wish this man, who is a man of privilege, who has always known privilege, and who two days or so before he wrote that disgusting, reprehensible, inhumane article on Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, he was dining with the king's wife. Now, you call it coincidence. I call it... <laughs> I call it the summit of the evil. 
But where there's evil, there's also good. But good may take its time. But oh, trust me, it does what it needs to do. And the ancestors did what they needed to do. I wish this man no ill, because we don't wish people ill. We just let, 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 let the evil, the rot, the nastiness that pulsate in their veins, in their heart and soul, let it do its work. We don't need to wish them any evil because they already have it in them. And evil will rot you from the inside. I wish Mr. Clarkson speedy recovery, good luck, God bless you. I'm running up against time here, unfortunately. Um, it's close to when I said I would be um, streaming this, so I'm gonna end it here, um, but I wanna end it on a, a, a great, great, great note. Um, I will follow a next, I'll start uh, doing it now uh, with the other things that um, uh, we are missing today. Because uh, I do want to talk about um, the Jeremy Vine show, and um, if my gender is in a is in a crisis or having a crisis, um, but Prince Harry has been ranked twenty fifth in a list of the hottest men of all times, uh, beating out people like Ryan Gosling, David Beckham, even Shadow Tatum, <laughs> uh, James Dean, Marlon Brando, and Cary Grant were. Um, Uncontro un uncontroversial, quote unquote, um, picks for the top three places in the list put together by Harper Bazaar. Listen, Harper Bazaar, good choice. Good, good choice. And this wasn't a survey or anything like that, that, you know, those other people do. And they just survey like 10. <laughs> Usually these lists from Harper Bazaar or like from People Magazine and stuff is the staff get, they get together staff and so on and they will put all of who they want to propose and they start to discuss why where all that kind of stuff and that's how they come up usually with their um list unless they say you know we did a survey of the uh, 100 women in pennsylvania or something um other than that that's how they usually do it and with that my friends um i will post another uh, follow-up to this um broadcast um, thank you so very much. Thank you for your kindness. And um, I am feeling much better, as I said before, and hopefully we'll continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. And talk to you soon. Ciao, ciao.